In this video, I'm going to be going over the do's and don'ts with a circular saw, which in my opinion is the most versatile tool, but also can be the most dangerous. You're watching Timmer Man TV. In this video, I'm going to be going over the do's and don'ts when operating a circular saw. In my opinion, the most versatile tool for a carpenter it can also be the most dangerous. One of the biggest mistakes that carpenters do, especially experienced ones that are very comfortable with their saw, is actually wedge their blade guard in the up position. This is designed to spring back so that when you're done cutting, you don't cut yourself, right? Safety first. So what they'll do is they'll take a little wedge like this, bring this guard all the way forward, and wedge this into their saw. So now my blade guard is completely retracted with that wedge in to operate. This is dangerous, definitely a no-no. In my opinion, what you want to do if you're going to start a cut on something is bring your finger on the back side and lift it up to start a cut. But once you start that cut, let the blade guard do what it needs to do. I have all 10 fingers still and I have done a lot of projects and I plan to keep it that way. That is one of the biggest mistakes. Another rookie mistake when operating the circular saw, for DIYers especially, is starting a cut with your body directly behind the saw. I'll get into another reason of why a saw can bind, but let's just say this saw is gonna bind and I'm directly behind it. It has a chance of kicking back at my gut, which is gonna be a bad thing. But I always like to start my cuts off to the side of my body, so just in case, I didn't do something right, that saw could kick away from me. Don't be directly behind the saw, that's dumb. Binding your blade is a huge mistake that often new DIYers and carpenters make, even guys that have worked for me in the past. I have to train them over and over again about how to properly set up their lumber to cut correctly. For instance, if I wanna cut right here on this two by four and I'm propping it up to let my blade pass through, the gravity obviously is gonna take this two by four down into itself thus pinching my blade and tossing the saw back at my gut. So again, if I wanna cut here on this two by four, always move your cut outside of where your props are or where your other bracing is. So I'm cutting here, once I cut through it, this piece is gonna fall off while I brace this side, standing off to the side. Nice, easy, safe cut. The same rule applies when you're cutting plywood. If I want to cut this sheet directly down the center and I prop on the ends, obviously I'm going to have some give in the center, which is going to fall down. It's going to bind your blade and cause it to stop and worse, kick it back. So again, if I want to cut in the center, I have to place my blocks in a position that's going to give a lot more stability. Now if I cut here, I have a platform on both sides that's going to hold the sheet equally. This is a safer way to cut down the center versus having them on the end. Do not make this mistake, you will regret it. Just always remember what's going to happen to my lumber after I cut it while my blade's in that center. Another mistake you want to avoid is having the wrong blade depth. There's a lever on all skill saws, circular saws right here that allows this table to swing up and down to give your blade a different depth. So as you see on this plywood, if I have the blade all the way down, I'm not only gonna be cutting through this first sheet, I'm also gonna be cutting through the bottom sheet, which is gonna be very bad. So again, just move your saw up to where there's just a little bit hanging below your cutting surface so that you do pass through the cut without hitting any material on the bottom. Sometimes I'll also put a strip, like a two by six underneath plywood where my blade barely goes into it, just to be safe on my cuts and not have anything fall down and bind my blade. Another mistake I see, especially when cutting through plywood, is your hand placement. Definitely do not want to have your hand in front of where you're going to be cutting for obvious reasons. On the same token, you don't want to have your hand directly behind where you're cutting in case you bind your blade and it kicks back into your hand. That blade is spinning at an extremely fast RPM and will take your fingers off faster than you will even know. Especially if you're just ripping off a small piece here, a lot of people try to grab that little piece and rip by their fingers, but your fingers are underneath that plywood close to the blade. So again, just avoid that at all costs. Always remember about your hand placement and what could happen if you, if you bind your blade. 
When I'm using any power tool, I always respect the tool. I know that, hey, this can hurt me. What are the steps that I can do to ensure that all my cuts are gonna be safe and I'm gonna walk out of here with all of these. I like using a battery operated circular saw. It just gives me more freedom, more mobility. I don't have to worry about this getting in my way. These are a lot cheaper to start with, but to me it's worth the investment to spend the extra money, get a battery operated saw so that this does not become a hindrance to you. This can get in the way. I've seen people cut right through their cords or you can trip on them. To me, it's just not worth it. Spend the extra money, get a battery operated saw, and don't have to stress or worry about a cord being in your way while you're cutting. True story, I forgot my battery operated saw going to one of my job sites pretty far away, so I had to stop and pick up this corded one, which sucked, but it got the job done. And lastly, always make sure that your blade has stopped spinning before you take it out of a cut or set it down. There's a brake system in these saws that allows the blade to stop as soon as I let go, but sometimes those fail and they can keep spinning. If you're in a habit of setting them down right away or pulling them out and that blade keeps spinning, again, there's a chance that something bad could happen. I believe that the circular saw is one of the most essential tools to have as a carpenter. I have another video, the link will be below, on what the two most important tools I think are. Make sure to check that out. You're watching Timberman TV. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below, smash that like button, and we'll see you next time.